how good's the wide receiver class? Because I don't know if you've heard here in Buffalo, they kind of need a new receiver. Yeah, they might. Yeah, I'd say, and I, I'm, I can't uh, say that I have quite the same Rolodex of context as someone like Mel Kiper Jr. does. So I'll defer to Mel when he tells me that it might be the best wide receiver class he's studied in a long, long time. But it's easy for me to see why he feels that way. And so many other trusted veteran voices feel that way because you've got three wide receivers at the very top and Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, and also Roma Dunze, who in a different year would be the number one wide receiver and it wouldn't even be a conversation. But one of them is going to end up being the third wide receiver taken. And it's going to feel like a slight to that player, but it might be at the sixth overall pick in the draft. So wide receiver depth at the top is incredibly impressive, but it goes all the way through day three. I mean, there are guys who I have day three, round five, round six grades on that in the right scenario, right situation might not be Puka Kua, but they could at least make a roster and give you something there. So the Bills, despite the fact that they are at 28, which is low in the order in the first round and very unpredictable inherently, I think they're in a good spot to land at least one impact wide receiver in this draft. A lot of the conversation here in Buffalo since the Diggs trade has now been on, okay, do you combine all the assets that you have and you move up to try and get one of those three? Are they worth it? Is it worth potentially mortgaging a future first round pick, a second round pick, like yeah. everything that it would take to get one of those three? Okay, so I think it's worth it in a certain context. I'm not sure this is the context in which it's worth it for a couple of reasons. First of all, I think the Bills have a fundamental belief that Josh Allen can help rally, raise the sort of profile of the players around him, right? And there's evidence. I mean, the Khalil Shakir connection was real down the stretch last year. I mean, there are some moments where lesser players had moments with Josh Allen because Josh is just that darn good. Uh, but moreover, everything about the Bills offseason, at least to me, screams like we're kind of resetting things, right? This is not the time for us to take whatever assets we have available, whether it's cap space, whether it's draft picks, whatever it might be, and put them all into one operation, put all of our eggs into one basket and say, Here's our splash move. I feel like this year has been one in which the Bills have told us, without maybe necessarily acknowledging it publicly, a little bit of patience because uh, the window does kind of keep going as long as Josh Allen is under center. So I would be less surprised if the Bills made a mini move up the board. That's kind of the Brandon Bean special, as, of course, you know very well, four times in the past six drafts has moved up in the first round. Uh, but that to me seems more likely than a major trade up. So a mini trade up or maybe even standing pat at pick 28. If they make the mini trade up, what would it probably be for a guy like a Brian Thomas Jr., an A.D. Mitchell, like somebody in that wheelhouse? Yeah, I keep coming back to those two names for Buffalo for this reason, is that I think you need some size in this wide receiver core as well. If you're going to go after a true number one with Curtis Samuel, probably his most well-known wide receiver, and Khalil Shakir, and then I guess Matt Collins is the third wide receiver, I suppose. Uh, I think right now it tells you like they need depth, but they also need some size. They need somebody who can really make a difference in the red zone. And I think A.D. Mitchell uh, makes the biggest difference in the red zone of those two players, he and Brian Thomas Jr. Meanwhile, I can already imagine Josh Allen getting the play call and just saying, all right, from Joe Brady, like the, the play call is, you know, in the NFL, every play call is this long drawn out uh, explanation. But the the intent is throw the ball up high and far to Brian Thomas Jr. and let him score a touchdown because he's got an incredible second gear to just jet past defenders, especially when they get when he gets when he gets defenders on their heels. It's game over. Uh, and Jaden Daniels was an adept pocket passer down the field last year. Certainly Josh Allen having one of the strongest arms in the entire NFL makes those kind of same deep ball connections that we saw from Jaden Daniels to Brian Thomas very easy to envision in Buffalo as well. I know the skill set is very different than what we're talking about with Brian Thomas Jr., but I was at the Combine in Indy, and one of the yeah. names that kind of was flying up kind of more on the radar for at least the Bills specifically was Lad McConkey. And then we find sure. out, well, he's met with the Bills multiple times. Why would his skill set be intriguing for a team like this? Well, yeah, Lad's a sick route runner. This guy is unbelievable. His nuance, his quickness, his shiftiness, the ability to set things up is terrific. Uh, he is very fast as well. I mean, the kid flew. He ran a 4 3 9 40 at the combine. The wheels are incredible. Very good after the catch as well. And the question with Lad will be the size, right? If, if the Bills are okay with a guy who's under 190 pounds, then, or maybe it's under 200 pounds. But the bottom line is that if you look at Lad versus A.D. Mitchell or Brian Thomas Jr., different body type for sure. Um, I think Lad probably ends up going late first, early second, maybe early to mid second uh, would be the range for Lad. So, uh, but if Buffalo does not feel the need for size is as important as I believe it is right now, uh, then then Lad will be a logical late round one target. What other names do you think make sense for the Bills if they do stand pat at 28? 
Yeah, so A.D. Mitchell, Brian Thomas Jr., maybe the dream, but they might also require a trade-up. Xavier Leggett, a name from South Carolina, so explosive with the football in his hands. Basically, get him the ball and just let him do the work. It's kind of a good strategy as it pertains to Xavier Leggett. Xavier Worthy, same first name, different skill set uh, as Worthy. Also, I mean, I guess Leggett and Worthy share great speed, but Worthy's is literally world-class as he <laughs> ran the fastest 40 in the history of the combine, but a very different body type, I should say. Uh, Leggett is 6'1", 220. He's Xavier Worthy is 165 pounds. Um, just not a lot of historical archetypes that fit that same body, uh, that same frame. So uh, the Bills definitely have different options there at 28, but uh, I wouldn't rule out the possibility of a mini trade up. I've also said several times I wouldn't rule out the possibility of a double dip, right? There is great depth in this class in Buffalo. They use their first and third round pick on, the, um, on a wide receiver. I'd say that's logical. We have not had to talk about safeties here in Buffalo for yeah, years but now it seems like we have to i don't think it would happen in the first round but maybe in like the second round or after that what yep. do you think about this class and is that kind of the sweet spot is it like okay maybe wait for day two and you could get somebody who could make an impact that's where i think it is i think it's they pick 60th in round two is that correct yep. yeah so 60th yep. overall that to me kind of that, that aligns with how my big board sacks them uh, Cole Bishop, safety out of Utah, has been the player that I've had as my top-ranked safety for quite some time now, really since the combine. He ran this blazing 4 4 one which you combine that with excellent instincts as a blitzer. He's got man-to-man -man coverage skills that we saw at the Senior Bowl. Uh, and just sort of the overall versatility, to me, makes him the top-ranked safety. But there is a little bit of like what you're looking for amongst the safety, right? Some people are really honed in on a specific type. Some... Um, say, hey, we need, you know, Jaden Hicks from Washington State, super versatile as well. You know, there's Kalen Bullock, who's this excellent free safety. He's got kind of this elite range, uh, but not as much of a tackle influencer. You got Cole Bishop, who I think might be sort of the best blend of all those things mixed into one. So to me, he would be a very logical round two target for Buffalo. If they don't go wide receiver, and like we just said, safety is probably not likely. What do you think yeah. the Bills would be a dark horse for in the first round? Oh, that's a good question. Not quarterback. That's about as far as I can rule out. Um, if it's not one of those, I would say it's just my guess would be if they don't draft or need it, just it's it's one where it's like a premium position, right? It's like let's continue to stack edge rushers. Not that they necessarily need one, right? Or stack another cornerback in the room. Add some offensive tackle depth. You know, there was some conversation earlier in the offseason. There's right tackle position that they need to address and maybe fortify even more long term. So um, when you're this good, and I know that the, the, the end was a sting for Bills fans, the way that it concluded this past year. But the reality is they don't have a ton of roster spots available. So if you're going to draft for value and not need, then do so at positions where they're just hard guys to find in general. And when you do find them and hit on them, you end up paying them a whole lot of money. Field, the last one for me, I like your perspective. I like national people's perspective on this. Are the Bills still a contender? Are they still Absolutely. somebody who can go win a Super Bowl? Absolutely. 100%. And maybe I'll be the guy that's, you know, too many years too late to count them out, but I'm not going to do it. No, I mean, Josh Allen, I thought, was the second most valuable player in the NFL last year. I don't have a vote, but it's now ranked choice voting, and I would have had Josh two on my ballot behind Lamar Jackson. He is a walking one-man threat that he's just way too good to dismiss. And um, now humility – can do a lot of things to you. I think the bills have been humbled um, and it can either sort of drive you or it can make you sort of feel the pressure of the moment. I think it's going to drive the bills this year. I think they realized that uh, they can't take it for granted that they have been the AFC champs for, I believe, three years running right now, four, um, four. three, three, four, excuse me. So, um, it, you know, the competition is going to be stiff next year and uh, they, they must know that like, while they have the goods to be in that conversation at some point, if you don't keep delivering, it's going to change things, right? Like, not everybody's going to be around for a long time if you can't deliver in the playoffs. So uh, it's kind of a gut check year for Buffalo, but I do absolutely unequivocally feel as though this team is one of the three or four best in the entire AFC. As things stand right now, noting that we still have an NFL draft a little over a week away. Awesome. Tell everybody so you're going to be on ABC for draft coverage. Is that correct? Yeah, looking forward to that ABC for nights one and two, and then we move over to ESPN, which will be uh, where the entire draft coverage is for us on Saturday for uh, the hardcores who love rounds four to seven. <laughs>